So, not to make this too much like homework, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Uh, but I wanted to look at where Pittsburgh came from and where it is now. And I looked at it in 1910, 100 years ago, Pittsburgh for the first time was one of the 10 largest cities in the country. And there were close to 13,000 people per square mile in Pittsburgh, which made it very much like these other top 10 cities, some of which have, have fallen out of the top 10, obviously, with Pittsburgh. Cleveland, Buffalo, St. Louis, they're not top 10 cities anymore. On the right, we have the top 10 cities in the year 2000, the most recent census. And the thing I want you to notice here is Pittsburgh, with 6,000 people per square mile, still has more people per square mile than five of the ten largest cities in the country. Five of the ten largest cities in the country have fewer people per square mile than Pittsburgh. Now, how could that be? Because they're not really cities as we know them in the east. They're counties. Houston is like 500 square miles. Phoenix is 400 square miles. San Diego, 400 square miles. San Antonio, same thing. So they've essentially played by entirely different rules. So when we compare ourselves to other cities and say we're falling behind, it's really not so. It's an apples and oranges question. And Pittsburgh is not as far behind as the others, which, well, this is just another homework slide. This, this just shows, like, Houston in 1910 was 17 square miles. In 1950, it grew to 160 square miles. By 2000, it was 600 square miles. Phoenix and San Diego weren't even measurable 100 years ago. Now they're close to 500 square miles, 300 square miles. And the reason this is important is we keep talking about, we keep, I think our problem in this region is we fight with each other all the time and we don't cooperate very much. We have 130 municipalities in Allegheny County. More, more than half have fewer than 5,000 people. And... Uh, we have more police departments in Allegheny County than there are in Montana. That's one of the things I learned. Uh, they could have, there's an Allegheny County Police Chiefs Association. They could have a softball league of nothing but police chiefs and have bench strength. Um, but anyway, what I did miss in this uh, slide is I just wanted to look at what Pittsburgh would look like if we had played by the, the rules the other cities had. And this will never happen in Pennsylvania, and I don't think it should happen. It's too late. Pittsburgh is too small. Uh, you know, it's, it represents only one quarter of the county now. But if we had played by the rules of Houston and, and these other four western cities, uh, we'd still be in Pittsburgh now. <laughs> I mean, in Houston, the mayor of Houston doesn't care if somebody's shopping within three miles of City Hall. She's got them in 12 miles in every direction. Uh, and so, as you can see from this map, even the smallest of these cities comes down to Upper St. Clair. And uh, some of them go as far, would go as far as Washington County. Uh, and all the way up, well into the North Hills, past the airport, to Plum. That's what those cities look like. And what was interesting to me and looking at it this way, is even in the smallest of these circles, there are 900,000 people, and in the largest, 1.2 million people. And you could pick any circle, and we'd be the ninth largest city in the country today. So when we compare ourselves to other cities and we, don't, we think we're falling behind, really, we're not. We're, we're right up there with them. We're just... We're just fighting with each other all the time, basically. That's our plan. Our plan is to pretend we're not a metropolitan area until it goes away. Uh, so I'm going to end with this, and then I'm going to take questions. But I wanted to, I wanted to end with a, a little happier note. So I'm going to do what all fathers do and talk about my daughter. Okay. I'm gonna, this is how I end my book. I'm just going to give... Uh, five or six paragraphs here if you'll indulge me. Wherever we go from here, the journey is unlikely to be as painful as the one that got Pittsburgh this far. We need only summon some of that old time resilience and innovation. The architecture hereabouts, both God's and man's, is very good. 
unlike places from Atlanta to Phoenix, we're not short on water. With worldwide demand for gasoline likely to keep prices high, our relative density will soon be seen as an attribute. With the demographics saying that the U.S. will have as many single-person households as families with children in the next 20 years, a walkable metropolis with high culture and big-time sports begins to look better. Our problems are mundane. Some of the biggest ones are accounting problems. We have to play our cards more wisely. Others may have better, but I still like ours. On the morning our first child was born, I held Curran up to the window, high in Allegheny General Hospital, where the golden triangle gleamed across the river on a bright late winter morning. I told her, girl, that's your city, that's Pittsburgh. Someday this will all be yours. A nurse laughed and said something like, I see you have high hopes for her. She didn't say whether she meant my daughter or Pittsburgh, but in either case, the answer is the same. I do. And that's it. That's all I got. So I'll take some questions. And